everybody. Welcome to Middle-Aged Fat Ass. This week is actually a very, very special episode. Why? Because we're drawing close to Super Bowl weekend. And in this episode, I am going to share some tips with you on how you can stay the course and still eat healthier, especially during halftime. Also, we're going to be talking about New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and the lap band surgery that helped him shed over 100 pounds. Ah, Super Bowl. It's that time of the year where friends and family can gather together and partake in the ritual of yelling at the TV screen, drinking more than usual, and eating stuff that's bad for them. Well, it's also one of the worst eating days right after the New Year. Why is that? Well, when that weekend comes along, you don't want to be a party pooper, and you just don't want to be like, oh, well, maybe I'll just have a little bite. You're usually expected to partake in things that you know are bad for you because you just don't want to feel like a bad guest. Well, I'm going to share with you a few tips on how you can stay healthy and how you can still eat right during Super Bowl. Here are five tips on what you can do to stay healthy during Super Bowl Sunday. Number one, if you're hosting a party, kick off your party with fiber. How do you do that? Well, what you want to do is that you want to place mugs of turkey chili along with the beef chili on the guest table. What it will do is that it will give people options on what type of chili they want to eat. Plus, it will keep the tone of your party healthy. Tip number two, keep buffalo wings out of arm's reach. Now, why do we do that? Well, if they're impossible to reach, we have less of a temptation to eat them. Tip number three, tackle your cravings. How can you do that? Well, what some people do is that they take a three ounce bag of microwave popcorn and top it with Parmesan cheese or some other light topping that they like. And what this does is that not only does it tackle your craving, it'll help you feel fuller faster, and it will be less calories in the long run. Tip number four, try to pass on big portions. One thing that you should know is if you take six tablespoons of guacamole and a little side of chips, you can split that between your partner and yourself. Or if you don't want to split it between your partner and yourself, you can split it with a friend or split it with somebody else at the party. And that also helps sweat your taste buds a little bit, and it will help you feel a little more, bit more satisfied. Another tip is, if you want to pass on big portions, be sure to eat a little slower. Don't inhale your food. Be sure to savor it. And tip number five, last but not least, and most important, take an alcohol timeout. Now, I know with Super Bowl, it is going to be really, really important to have like a beer or two or three or four or five or six. Well, the reason you should take an alcohol timeout is, well, your body will thank you for it later. Two, you won't be hung over the next day. And three, you won't make an ass out of yourself at the next Super Bowl party or any Super Bowl parties in the future. Now, why do we say take an alcohol timeout? Well, when you take an alcohol timeout, what you want to do in between beers is that you want to drink water, drink plenty of water, because alcohol actually dries out your system. And you don't really want to drink too much because you do want to remember the game, especially when your favorite team wins. And when your favorite team takes home that trophy, you don't want to wake up the next day and ask, who the hell won? So this is why it's very important to take an alcohol timeout. Now, when you, when you take an alcohol timeout, your body will thank you, and you won't feel so bloated. If you want more tips on how you can stay healthy and drink sensibly during Super Bowl, you can check out more tips in my Tumblr blog this week. But just remember, it is Super Bowl Sunday, and you are allowed to slip up just a little. And if you do slip up just a little, don't beat yourself up too much over it because, well, it's just one day and it's not going to ruin you for the rest of your life. If you fall off the wagon, just remember you're human and, well, there's always the next day. In our celebrity health spotlight, Governor Chris Christie 
has lost about 100 pounds thanks to lap band surgery. Before he underwent the surgery, he weighed about 320 pounds, and it was really affecting his health. I'm going to read to you a little article about what Dr. Thomas Inge said about Governor Christie's weight loss surgery. He says that with everything the man is dealing with, it is a wonder he has done so well. This is talking about his surgery. Focusing solely on weight loss undermines to the proven health benefits of bariatric surgery, including its ability to reverse heart disease and type 2 diabetes. So apparently, he was suffering from type 2 diabetes as well. And this is only proof that when you lose weight and you can't do it on your own, sometimes weight loss surgery works, especially in Governor Christie's case. On a personal note, it gives me hope that even Republicans are waking up to the obesity epidemic. And Governor Christie, if you're watching, congratulations. You'll be around for your family for a very long time. And you're looking great, so keep up the good work. Hey everybody, I'm not just on YouTube. You can catch me on Tumblr and Podbean as well. You can also catch me on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Hello, Google+, Instagram, and you can also email me at middleagefatass at gmail.com. Well, that's it for another episode of Middle Age Fat Ass. I hope you guys have a great Super Bowl weekend, and I will see you next time. Until then, stay healthy and stay beautiful.